cinematic look, motion blur, polarized light, neutral density filters, shutter speeds, all photographic terms that have a huge impact on what you shoot and are all very easily explained. And that's what I'm doing today. So a very quick video this week on neutral density or ND filters and polarized filters and how they will help you cut down reflections and glare and give yourself a much smoother video. So to go through what polarized and ND filters do, I'm gonna be making use of a truly excellent little pack of uh, mixed filters from Freewell, which contains a mix of ND, polarized ND and plain polarized filters. The link for this is uh, in the text below. Um, they've got a number of different pack sizes available. And I have to say that after playing with it for a few days, I really am impressed with the quality of these. And I think they're a genuine alternative to the Polar Pro sets. So what do you actually get inside the pack? So it comes in a very smart little box. You have the straightforward polarizer. You have three pure ND filters, ND4, 8, and 16. And you also have four polarized ND filters, an ND8, 16, 32, and even a 64. So the Mavic does come with its own blank filter protector, which is protecting the thread. So if you look here, you have to hold the gimbal quite firmly at the edge, and you just turn, you can see it screws off, and you're left, it has no glass. It's literally there to protect the threads. So to put on one of these filters, hold it firmly, screw it firmly on. The polarized filters actually have two elements. They have the screw thread to actually fit on the uh, thread on the lens itself, but they actually have a secondary swivel that allows you to turn the polarizer. And I'll go through that very shortly as to why that's so important. I have to say I am really impressed with the quality of these. They've got the very solid aluminium, very lightweight, and they stay in place even with the clip on. So you can actually leave one on. If you find one that suits your normal filming conditions, you can just leave it on all the time. The reason you want to reduce the amount of light getting into your lens is that it allows you to reduce the shutter speed as well. And this has an enormous impact on how smooth and cinematic your end video will look. Look along the bottom of the screen where the grass is moving fastest. In this first clip, without any filter, each frame is so sharp you can begin to see the movement between each frame. Now look at the same shot taken with an ND filter fitted on the lens. The movement is smoother because each individual frame is slightly blurred as the shutter is open a split second longer. This is where the term cinematic effect and motion blur come in, by making sure that each frame of the video is blurred into each other rather than sharp individual frames. That's the way the human brain and the eye likes things and it will end up making your video look a lot smoother. You normally have an ND4, 8 and a 16. They're the most common ones. And on a uh, bright cloudy day, you might use a 4 or an 8. Or on a very sunny day at lunchtime, say, you'd probably use a 16. In all cases, you're trying to bring your shutter speed down to around 1 50th or 1 60th of a second. Why, you might ask. Well, if you're shooting in PAL at 25 frames per second or NTSC at 30 frames per second, there's a simple filming rule called the 180 rule and all it simply means is that you try and get your shutter speed to twice that of your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 25 frames per second, you're aiming for 1 50th of a second and if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, you're aiming for 1 60th of a second. So it's not always about video though. Sometimes you want to reduce the shutter speed on photos as well. Typically, uh, you want to do that around water or waterfalls so that you can get a nice, soft, silky look. And that brings me nicely on to the second part of this video, which is about polarized filters and polarized light. First off, a 20 second physics lesson on light. Uh, don't worry, it won't lose you. It's very straightforward. 
Normal light traveling through the air has waves going in every direction, but light that has actually hit a surface and is reflecting, those light waves are all going up and down in exactly the same orientation. A polarizing filter will only allow light through in a particular orientation as well. So if you can imagine light waves going in one direction, the reflected light waves oscillating one direction, the polarizing filter will either allow that light to go through or you can turn the filter and it will block the light going through. Through. And that is the most important element of a polarizing filter. You have to turn it to align it to block the light from a reflection. So this is a really useful concept because it means that you can reduce reflections and glare just by fitting a polarized filter and adjusting that filter to cut out all the reflections. So you can see here as I turn the dial of the polarizer the reflections in the water cut right down to the point where they almost disappear. you made it this far it means I didn't lose you with all the physics and um, you understand now how polarized light and neutral density ND filters will help you with your photos and video. Um, I am really impressed with the Freewell uh, set of filters uh, I'm not just saying that they are very well made and a fantastic bit of kit. Um, as ever you know I make these videos every few weeks if you like what I do then click the thumbs up if you don't like what I do then th click the thumbs down and tell me what I'm doing wrong either way subscribe so you get notified and have fun and happy flying <laughs>